welcome to Export Kit. In this example, we're going to demonstrate creating a responsive navigation menu. And you'll see our nav menu here. We have a, a couple of CSS styles. One is basically for the hover state of each of the links. And another is for the actual responsive click menu that we've created. So you'll see our mobile design, but the navigation menu itself has completely changed. We now have a nav button, which when pressed will in essence display our menu in a mobile style. So you'll see here that the navigation menu is very responsive. And what will happen is that based on the resolution of your display, it will now become a responsive nav menu. And this is easily done with Export Kit, Adobe XD, and a little bit of JavaScript. So if there's any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and make sure you subscribe. Now let's get started to see how we can create this using Adobe XD. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is our actual design for our responsive nav menu. So I'm going to close the folders just so it's a little bit easier uh, to describe each thing first. Uh, let's go ahead. So we're going to take a look at our desktop and I'm actually going to hide uh, the styles and the script uh, just to make sure that we're going in sync as to exactly what's created here. So for our desktop design, what we have is we have our menu that we saw in our initial uh, actual output, but we also have our click button, which is located within our design. So what this is very important that we've added a style for menu and we also added a style for the navigation itself, because what we're going to do is we're going to take control of these within the JavaScript uh, for the response states. So what we've done is on our click button itself, we've designated it uh, for CSS class of menu. And on our navigation, we've designated this as nav. Now we did have our hover states for our buttons, you'll see here. So what we've done within our actual design is we've created a couple other classes for item. And this is for each of the actual uh, menu items that are displayed within the navigation. Now that being said, once a style is applied to an individual item, you'll note here that we have one for nav, we have one for an uh, sorry for a folder, we have one for uh, an image, and we have a couple for text. Now a folder does not require a default CSS style, but text and images and also shapes as well, they require one. So this is where our CSS styles come into play. So let's just show the titles. Now our CSS styles that we have, we have a normal state. Let's just actually go into that. We have a normal state for item and then we have a hover state for item. So this is easily done by simply copying the text element and changing the actual layer name. And we've covered this in a few different videos. This will simply assign the CSS state on hover based on the actual properties of this element. Now make sure you include these in your CSS styles to take control of them. For menu, once we've assigned a style to any item, we must include a default CSS style. So uh, for the image, we actually included our default image here as well. And this could have changed uh, virtually for anything. So if we wanted a hover state for it, we could have added another image simply and added a hover state within our CSS styles. So looking back at our actual design again, let's actually zoom out. So we've covered our navigation menu. What's important is that we have menu and we have nav. So if we look at our mobile design now, let's actually hide the desktop. Let's open our mobile. Now, if we look at our mobile design, you'll see that our navigation menu is very different uh, than the previous one that we had in our desktop view. So what's very important in, is that in this menu, we've changed the design slightly, but we have not changed the layer names. You'll see that the layer structure is, is basically the exact same as it was within the desktop. Now, if you're not sure how to create responsive screens, we do have another tutorial that is specific to this because what we've done is we've created two views to make our responsive menu. So this is purely assuming that you have your responsive views ready to go. So we still have the exact same class structure for menu and we have our nav structure. So again, this is very important because what we're going to do is we're going to take control of this within our JavaScript. So that being said, let's take a look at both designs once we have them ready. Now it's irrelevant uh, once you're using CSS screens whether or not you have both folders displayed or you have a few not displayed, they will all render. So now looking back at our actual script, let's take a look. 
we have here our code uh, tag for our text layer, which what we're creating is our basic JavaScript for our click menu. Now we could have loaded this externally, but it's a very small script, so it's simply just uh, localized within the actual file itself. Now the script, uh, just to go over it very quickly, what it's doing in essence is it's looking for a menu. You'll see here query selector menu. So this is the menu class that we applied previously to the image. You'll actually see it here. And what it's doing is that when it's clicked, it will basically, in essence, display the nav or not display the nav. Now, what's important is that this is only visible when we're on a responsive view. We don't want it, uh, sorry, when we're on a mobile view. We don't want it visible when we are displaying our desktop view itself. So what we've done here is we're controlling now when the window resizes. So we're checking if the inner width is basically greater than the width of a tablet. A lot of tablets are about 750. And what we're doing is we're controlling the display of our menu and our, well, our menu icon and as well our navigation. So what we're doing is that if it's less than 750, so it's less than a tablet, we're going to display our actual menu icon and we're going to hide our navigation but if it's greater than 750 so we're on a desktop we're going to hide our menu icon and display our nav completely so that being said this javascript is simply applying uh, on resize uh, an on resize event to the window and then up reapplying this function to check the size of the window itself so it's a very quick javascript it's a couple of lines uh, very simple to have incorporated and there are many different ways for you to check uh, for the actual window state but with this done what we can do simply now is we will have a responsive click menu so what I'm going to do first is we're going to in essence delete the JavaScript so we're gonna see how this renders without the JavaScript the one actual last thing what's important is that before we export, you should include CSS images because we are using CSS images in essence. We're changing the, some classes to include uh, CSS and actual image states. So what this will do is this will give better control of the images when we're actually using classes. So very important is that once you start to apply a style to an image, you should always enable CSS uh, within the actual image output options. So what this will do is this will render instead of an actual image tag, it will render a div with a background image. So again, very important, include CSS images. So we'll simply export this. And let's close this so we can retest. So if we drag this on, you'll see that it has all the items that we've rendered. It does have our CSS states because these were assigned by default. And if we resize, it will simply reapply exactly what was there. So let's try this one more time. And let's, in essence, re-add the code tag. And let's re-export. So you'll see now that the click menu is hidden, and this is based on the JavaScript. We still have our hover states for our link buttons, but if we resize the page, we now have our mobile view, but we also have our nav menu, which is now invisible, and our menu icon is now visible. And again, this is all based on the JavaScript. So it's basically just toggling the states as it's going between mobile and between uh, desktop. Now we do have our click event. So when this is clicked, the nav itself will become visible. Now there are a lot of options that we can do with this. Whereas in essence, rather than it simply uh, just displaying block or becoming visible, we could have had this slide down. We could have had it fade in. There are a lot of different transitions and animations that we could have done to this to completely customize it. But this is, in essence, very quick and easy uh, 
responsive click navigation menus using simple JavaScript, Export Kit, and Adobe XD. You'll see here that we can change the content of our design very quickly based on exactly what the requirements are of the project. So again, responsive nav menus, Export Kit, Adobe XD, a little bit of JavaScript, quick and easy to do.